even though Microsoft has done a really great job with the overall security and the security guidance behind the combination of Windows Server and Exchange Server and the network and everything, you know, everything that they've told us to do, the fact of the matter is that when you are up against a sufficiently motivated adversary and one with sufficient resources, uh, there, the, the, there are so many advantages for the attacker. They only have to find a single route in. In this case, the early indications seem to be that Hafnium is associated with a nation state, and they obviously wanted to compromise exchange um, and put a lot of effort into it, and they, they appear to have been successful. Yeah, it is, it, it is very unusual in the respect that it doesn't require uh, anything apart from a published exchange server. And for, for some time, if you remember, do you remember the, uh, the, some of the last on-premises exchange sessions uh, for, I think, around 2016 time uh, when, when Microsoft were talking about the pirate proxy um, or right. R, uh, address request routing. And... Right about that time, there was there was certainly a view from Microsoft that it was pretty much secure enough to publish um, unprotected, no pre-authentication to the outside world. So customers that have followed that kind of guidance um, are, unfortunately, the, the people that really need to take action as soon as possible. Uh, but this right. isn't something that affects just people publishing OWA or any exchange server over HTTPS to the outside world that this is you know, that this is serious stuff that if somebody gets into your network via another means then this this is an issue it's employees for example who have a, a grudge and capabilities could use this against you I guess the thing that I I try to keep in mind when we talk about this kind of threat is it's immensely sexy to catalog all the possible ways that an attacker can exploit a particular vulnerability because that's fun, right? It's the Mission Impossible or, you know, uh, James Bond's Q branch. It's, it's a lot of fun to think of all the scenarios that could be chained together to result in a compromise. Um, but the fact of the matter is that ignoring all of those, any one of those scenarios where an attacker is able to get network access to your exchange server, whether they do it on the internal network or from the outside, whether they do it themselves with a bunch of ninjas who break into your building or they pay an employee, or it doesn't, the mechanism doesn't matter. Right? What matters is this is a real and serious potential compromise. And Microsoft has, I think, has done a very good job of communicating that seriousness. They have been very yeah. loud across multiple channels telling people, go, go patch this now, this is serious. And I give them credit for that because if you compare that response to what some other enterprise software companies, <coughs> SolarWinds, have recently done in terms of trying to downplay the seriousness of a potential yeah. vulnerability, Microsoft gets top marks from me in terms of admitting this is potentially a very bad problem and you should take action on it immediately. Absolutely. And that the fact that they've made such a big deal about it versus... Uh, the issues around right about this time last year, I think it was, it was January or February, then that should tell you something about how they feel about this. Uh, this isn't something that's that that you should downplay. Uh, and yeah, th thinking about all of the different ways that it might be exploited is less important than actually getting on top of this as soon as you can and making sure that it's not an issue because this is th this is an area where it will be extremely costly to to solve this later on this is not something yes. that I, you know I, I have seen over the last year customers who not because of this that these particular vulnerabilities in exchange that have came out but through other means have have had a compromise of some sort where somebody has taken control over their active directory over their systems and rowing back from that and also putting back in place or putting in place better security controls is it, it takes time and it is very costly and solve this problem now because it's something that you should you should be on top of there's no excuse to be a customer that says well we don't publish our exchange service to the internet let's not bother with this one and hybrid customers uh which is 
or should be every customer with Azure AD Connect in place, i.e. hybrid identity, and is running a hybrid server for management, right. then they will all be affected by this as well. So in theory, any Office 365 customer with Azure AD Connect and, and a hybrid server, even if it's just internal for management purposes, especially so if it's being used uh, more widely, it's still doing auto discover to the outside world, or is also uh, being used for mail relay. You know, if it, this this is something you should be on top of. It is. You know, I saw um, the very popular security persona, I guess you'd call it, Swift on security on Twitter, who said the other day, "Oh, well, you know, if you're not a Fortune 50 company, you shouldn't be running Exchange on prem anyway." And Without debating the merits of that statement, I think we could probably do you know six episodes worth of just digging into that and arguing about it. The fact of the matter is there are an awful lot of people who are still running exchange on prem probably shouldn't be yeah um, and should see this as a call to wake up and say just from purely from a perspective of reducing the potential attack surface in their environments, if you have exchange servers and you're not using them for anything or you have 50 mailboxes left because you have, I don't know, line of business applications and you didn't want to bother to make them compatible with the service, for example. Hello, this is your wake up call. Get rid of those things. Um, and if you have gone the full route and are in a state, as you say, where you have Azure AD Connect and a hybrid server, don't assume that because you don't have active user mailboxes in your on premises environment that you're still safe because you're not. Yeah. And um, it, it came to my attention earlier today uh, via another MVP. I think it was Andy David that had seen on the forums. People are people are struggling with patching Exchange servers, and that shouldn't be the case. If you're running a hybrid server, this, this is your wake up call to keep on patching it. You shouldn't have been letting it get right. You know, more than a couple of CUs behind. At the very worst, you shouldn't be leaving this. If you had a consultant come in do a migration for you or fast track told you what to do at the time and you just left that server sitting there then that don't just leave don't just patch it now and leave it. make sure that you're in that routine of applying cus it is you know it is like running a service pack for exchange uh, if it's a roll-up update again you know a security patch do it from an admin prompt reboot after but this is the this is stuff it's been on the site for years. So you'll see tons of guides on how to patch your exchange servers back from uh, Paul Cunningham, showing you the right way to do this. It's right. it's a well-trodden path. It's not something you should be too concerned about. Just follow the right guidance. It's, it's very, very doable. And it's just worth keeping up to date with anyway. I, I, I do I do question this that this Fortune 50 companies statement though I know as you said we could go on for ages about that but that yeah the whole hybrid thing that applies to almost every customer apart from the very very smallest of customers you know under sort of 50 people what at what point do you not need an Azure AD Connect server or or, or something similar like the, the cloud sync capabilities but people People, organizations, businesses have loads of reasons to want to run email servers within their own environment. And it's it's, it, it's good to get advice from security experts in their field. Uh, but that doesn't that doesn't mean you're wrong for doing something. If you know, if you've looked at those options and took them on board, but I, I can think of companies that are not Fortune 50 companies who absolutely have to run Exchange on prem, as I'm sure you can. Uh, and many that think they need to and probably should move, but but just haven't yet. Right. So I had an interesting thought when I saw the post you were talking about um, regarding people who are having trouble patching. I wonder if you did a demographic analysis of the people who are responsible for patching those servers, how many of them have had to patch an exchange server before because they are very junior and have had this sort of it's not important it's just a hybrid server. We only use it for management, just sort of dumped in their laps because they're the most junior members of the IT organization. I think that'd be a fascinating question to ask and get data for. We'll never know, uh, but I would bet a significant number of the problems are coming from people who have never had to patch exchange servers before because yeah. the senior people who know how to do it and have been doing it for years and years have moved on to other workloads or other tasks. Yeah. Anyway, that's idle speculation 
on my part, if since we're not here to idly speculate, but to give people practical guidance, <laughs> uh, the practical guidance I'll give you is go patch your stuff quickly. Pay careful yeah. attention. Make sure that you are <laughs> sure that you are. Make sure that you're picking up Microsoft's notifications. So, yeah. whatever channel you first learned about this patch from, uh, whether that's social media, whether it's the Microsoft blogs, MSRC, I got a Microsoft Partner Channel email telling me to go patch my servers, which I think is great. Right, Microsoft is clearly using every mechanism they can to tell people. But whatever mechanism you learned about this problem from, make sure that you're paying attention to it in the future.